Greetings Guardians, my name is Bife here. So, recently I made a video talking about Sloane and Arsa. That video went over what is probably the most important revelation about Arsa, which is that her species was encountered by the witness and was, of course, given a curse of knowledge. The infighting between those that believed and those that didn't created a schism. And those that did believe what the witness had told them became the worm gods pursuing the sword logic of the hive. This also included the knowledge that Asa was a proto-worm god and that she had existed on Fundament long ago, long before the Hive began their struggle. This revelation is worth covering first because contextualizing Asa is a truly necessary step in this story. Understanding who she is and what motivates her is something that allows us to piece together the story far more easily. However, as monumental as she is in size and narrative importance, Asa is still only half the story. The other half lies with Deputy Commander Sloan and her ghost, Shuhan. Today, we're going to explore the start of their story from where it left off near the end of the season of Arrivals, and we're going to talk about the moments and choices that led Sloan to her mysterious new ally. This is a multi-part series, and it'll be going over a lot of pieces of lore, but ultimately, it is going to be one of the more important series of videos. It's going to be at the center of everything to happen with this season. I hope you enjoy it. So, let's recap what happened to Sloane for those who weren't there. Sloane was one of the people who stayed behind on the various planets and moons during the season of Arrivals. Titan had long been her vigil to watch over and she wasn't going to let it slip into the enemy's hands in vain. As she put it at the time, the thing that concerns me is we're acting like they've already won. Before Titan disappeared, she tasked us with hunting down various hive across the Arcology. From those hive, we recovered various pieces of stolen Golden Age technology that were being hoarded by a hive treasurer, and we disrupted various hive rituals in the deeper reaches of the Arcology superstructure. It almost seemed too perfect that the minions of Savathun that we recovered the suit from just so happened to have a suit of Golden Age survival armor that was perfectly in Sloane's size. One might even say that the Witch Queen might have planned this all along. Seeing it recovered, Sloane informed us that she would be staying behind on Titan to fight whatever was unleashed by the Black Fleet. She told us that at the beginning of it all, her, Zavala, Shax, they had all been the wall before there even was a wall around the city. They had begun this war to keep the people safe. As far as Sloane was concerned, it wasn't over yet. When she stayed behind on the rig, she would equip the Golden Age suit of power armor and would do battle against the Hive and Taken on the rig. This moment where Sloane and her ghost are left alone is where our story really begins. This is Riastrad one of Sloane's final entries from the Season of Arrivals. After she watched the Guardian's ship roar off Titan for the last time, Deputy Commander Sloane went into her office and put on the Golden Age technology she had claimed from the Hive. The heavy power source hung from her shoulders like a bandolier. She draped it across her neck and stepped into the suit. Vast and clumsy. She bowed her head into the grey hood. A view screen appeared before her. She did not understand the language, not yet, but chose the green option. With a hiss, the suit conformed to her shape. It was heavy, but she had full range of movement. She focused on her arm, concentrated, and the material scabbed into thick armor plates. That was something. She tried to form arc energy, but the suit blocked her light. Or perhaps she would have to learn how to flex her light through the suit. She selected another option with her eyes, and selected again to confirm. There was no pain as she felt the suit snake a cold tube through her side and coil somewhere near her stomach. That answered a few of her questions. Sloan lurched outside. There was a storm, like Titan was trying to drive off the invader that sat lazily in its sky. She walked into the gale, and the rain beaded on her second skin. Each step was easier than the last as the suit adjusted to her gait. A symbol flashed, and a hive thrall charged her. She gripped it by its neck and arm before tearing it apart. 
It was so easy. She laughed then, and the suit interpreted it as a battle cry and amplified it, broadcasted it. The sound echoed off the discarded shipping containers on the rainy landing pads, echoed through Siren's watch and up toward the pyramid. Lightning flashed in the sky, and the storm raged on. In this brief moment of power, Sloan might have found a little purpose once again. She would be the last pillar standing against the raging waves of Titan's hive and Taken aggressors, but her battle was only just a beginning. In this first entry, we get a moment at which Sloan was truly abandoned on Titan. Not by us, but by the choices of the Pyramid. We get an idea of what happened when an entire planet was abducted by the Witnesses' forces. The law here is displayed in the NPA Weir Walker gear set. I'm not sure if Weir Walker is the correct pronunciation there, but so be it. The helmet is where we'll start, and it reads as follows. Day Zero. Black skies quell storms as if they were fleeing omens. Titan's pyramid dragged hurricanes across the sky like chained gods. Deputy Commander Sloan had seen faint lightning flash from deep beneath the Arcology Dome, timed prior strikes and their thunder to judge the storm's movement. But as she walked outside to a flash, this time there was no thunder. It had taken Sloan most of the morning after the Guardian had left to reach the surface. Waves were overtaking the rig platform, sloshing methane across the battle-marred power suit woven into Sloan's body. Hell. She straightened her spine within the suit and stared at the pyramid through her HUD, watching it displace existence around it as it clawed a distorted path through the sky. Shohan zoomed toward her through a blur of flickering neon. Moving away from us. Shouldn't be moving at all. Sloane turned to her ghost. Let's get that perimeter set. The hive will come again tonight. Before she could move, the pyramid began shedding scales from its hull. They hovered for a moment over where they'd detached and peeled away, revealing opalescent flesh. Suddenly, the pyramid emitted a wave that struck Titan, and a half-remembered tone resonated through Sloane's mind. With it, a lifetime. Every experienced moment in a slurry of vivid flashes condensed into simultaneous chaotic anarchy, grasping at grief, joy, anger, love. Seen from where she stood, past experiences gained new perspectives, memories best left dusted with rosy haze shrank under harsh light, warmth too fleeting, cold still, ever frigid in its isolation. And something else, sifting through it all, drawing it to order, as if rearranging fractured collagic pains into a new image. She struggled to breathe, and her suit flexed against the weight of her years, splayed out across time in violating fashion. Then, just as suddenly, they were gone, faded into dreams. The sky turned black and orange like a fire screen, and thunder resonated. Sloane's body pitched forward over the platform, sinking through air, then sea. Heavy metal was swallowed whole. Consciousness faded into the black. Her experience tumbled through sharded eras of reality like an astral projection. Even as she felt her feet still firmly planted in the present, a cascade of timeless scenes whirled by like panes of life captured in glass, in an indefinite stream of consciousness. Scenes of Titan, a vibrant seascape installation, too familiar not to be memories, not hers, but no less real. Their point of focus left Titan, dragged backwards across the lonely expanse of space to a world she'd never seen. Its seas full of vivacious promise, its moons conceal a watcher in the sky, its waves breed insidious appetite in the deep. 
There is a temptation there she craves, but does not understand. Unnatural and cursed. She fell again, guided, through a song, a memory, an image of a dream bent into perception like a focusing lens, unreality coated in familiar skin, an attempt at understanding. The tower, friends and comrades, shine and grime, all. A heralded return, a shadow drawn overhead, a battle delayed returning. The tower, a time yet lived, black shadows that would fill an empty void in the sky, extending impaling blades down into the streets, pinning life in paralytic mockeries of contentment, a display that strangles agency. A serpent winds a path beneath the shadow and offers to guide. She remembered this happening, and that it had not yet happened. So I should probably lead by saying that this is undoubtedly one of the most confusing lore tabs that I think people could possibly read, and even I have to admit that I don't think it's possible to glean absolute truth from everything here just yet. We may need to wait until there's more story in the season to get absolutely all the bits and pieces of it correct, but I'm going to unpack what I think I understand from this for the moment. This is, of course, also important because it's the only record we have of the moment when the pyramids abducted Titan and the other planetoids. I think the best conjecture I can give here is that in the moment that Sloane falls from the platform on the Arcology and falls into the sea, she also falls into a stream of consciousness bridged across the experiences of many peoples and many times. I say peoples because the experiences don't seem to be purely human. At one point, she sees her own memories, at another, she sees Titan as it once was, back in the Golden Age, perhaps seeing the perspective of those who lived there in the Golden Age. The second part after that is a lot less clear, but at best guess, a world potentially full of life, with a watcher in the sky, many moons in the sky, and a sea with deep hunger. This sounds like a good description of Fundament to me, a world with 52 moons, one of them being the Traveler. The Traveler's not originally a moon, it was just mistaken for one by the inhabitants. Don't get that twisted. The idea of this second set of visions being of Fundament might make sense, as if this is the memories that are being passed through Sloane all at once in sequence, these might be memories related to Arsa, projections granted to Sloane through Arsa's presence. There are also the scenes from the tower, which are in a completely different time and place, but I can't help but feel that they represent a future potential calamity. None of it makes true sense, and it's all in the context of displacement via time and space, so it's not really clear what's going on or when it's happening, but my best guess here is that Sloane is seeing the doom of all humanity, the moment when the last city truly does fall. Regardless, this is where Sloane's journey begins, and this is the first time she ever gets anything close to a glimpse of Asa. In this dreamlike vision, she was offered guidance, something that had happened, and yet had not yet happened. Next time though, we're going to be looking into everything that happened in Sloane's new life as Titan had been abducted and captured by the Witness. This is the moment at which we'll start to see the influence of other powers on Titan, and we'll also get a look at certain scientists that discovered Asa in the Golden Age. We may not have the records of their own personal account of this, and yet Sloane was able to get a very first-hand piece of evidence from them. You'll understand what I mean by that in the next video. For the moment, simply sit and realize that this is important because Sloane is going to see evidence that humanity did learn about Asa in the Golden Age, even briefly, and that even then, she was trying to warn them of doom. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and if you're looking forward to the rest of the bits of it, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you have any thoughts of your own, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments section. If you want more Destiny content, go ahead and hit subscribe. 
and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. And of course, know that as per usual, your viewership as always is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been My Name is Bife. Orodasia Ad Astra. I'll see you, Starside.